Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison, and today we're gonna to review with you some anatomical drawings from the turn of the 15th and 16th century, drawn by none other than Leonardo da Vinci himself. Now, this group of anatomical drawings were housed at Windsor Castle's Royal Library, and many of them are currently at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. The interesting thing about this first image is that Leonardo drew an elongated stylite process on this anatomical drawing where the other signs and symptoms that we normally associate with prolonged abnormal spinal curvature or signs that there could have been occult instability are not present. So it's interesting for us to see the presence of an elongated styloid on an anatomical drawing from 1496 where we don't see any other indications that there was significant abnormalities in the cervical spine or other signs of trauma. Next, you see this entire spine that Leonardo da Vinci drew in the early 1500s showing what he thought were the normal spinal curves based on the anatomy of the subject that he had. The normal spinal curvature, I want you to think of it as something that builds strength to the overall structure. Imagine one of those old bridges that many of us learned about in elementary school where the shape of the bottom of the bridge was able to distribute forces equally so that the bridge would have longevity and strength and last many thousands of years. Now, in today's modern society, with how reliant we are on being on our technology all day and being in seated positions with our neck forward and our head forward, it has caused a breakdown not only in our cervical spine curve, but also in our thoracic spine curve and many times lower in the spine as well. The reason that we bring this up today is because as you can see on the Leonardo da Vinci drawing, that it's very important that we have a lumbar lordosis, a thoracic kyphosis, and then a gentle cervical lordosis. Many people, when they have a breakdown in the cervical curve, which can cause hyperextension in the thoracic spine and cause the lower neck to be too far forward, blocking jugular vein drainage from the brain, causing head pressure, lightheadedness, dizziness, blurred vision, eye sensitivity, eye pain, head pain, feeling like you're not yourself, fight, being in fight or flight, restlessness, irritability, discomfort, feel like your joints are popping out at other areas because the spine is so out of position, and other people that have obtained a really nice cervical curve, but still have hyperextension in the thoracic spine can also be getting jugular vein compromise, neurologic irritation, cerebral spinal fluid abnormalities. So we need to not only rehabilitate the cervical lordosis, but also restore thoracic kyphosis. As you can see in the Leonardo da Vinci drawing, this is not a new concept. All of the modern anatomy books also recognize that we do need a gentle thoracic kyphosis combined with a gentle cervical lordosis. And many people we're finding nowadays are losing part of that thoracic curve and it's inhibiting a full recovery when they only get treatments that address the neck curve. Thank you for watching and please stay connected with us through our channel where weekly we will be publishing new content to help you on this journey towards structural health in the 21st century.